Hello once again, my readers of good literature. My name is Nick Pell, and this is coming from my white room. Now, this week's book that I have for you guys is George Orwell's Animal Farm. Um, I read it in the Signet Classic Edition. It is 141 pages, um, 10 chapters total. Yeah, that's my edition. If you saw one of my earlier reviews, I saw that I... I thought I read 1984, which is also by George, or George Orwell, um, and I didn't really like it that much, and I still really have no positive things about it. But this book, different book, uh, and I did like it a little bit better. So, um, let's go straight to characters. The first character would probably be Napoleon. Now, um, one thing to know right away is that uh, this book is very unrealistic, and you have to just go into it knowing that. Animals talk and they communicate with humans when they're able to communicate with each other, which I don't know if that happens in animal speak, actually, but um, after they take over the farm uh, fairly quickly. The way that the rest of the world reacts to it is kind of unrealistic as well. But uh, going back to Napoleon, he is probably the main character in this book, I want to say. It seems like the story more or less revolves around him and what he does, especially in the later parts of the book, and he is a pig. He uh, kind of becomes the leader of the society after certain events occur, kind of makes policies and changes stuff for the betterment of the farm. Another character who is important is Snowball. He is another pig. Um, they have opposite views of how to do things uh, right away in the story. But you see these two clashing viewpoints and uh, it's very interesting to see, and it reflects something that's kind of Interesting if you know enough about um, communism and the history of the countries that have it. Boxer, he's also, um, I would say, he's, he's more of a side character, but he's also an important character. Um, he's a horse, and he, uh, at the beginning of the story, um, he's a very young horse. Not young, but he's strong, and uh, he's very loyal to the leadership. He wants to do the best that he can. That's what he does. He's loyal to whatever leader is in power, and uh, that's... An interesting thing to see but it's also uh, showing someone who is just willing to work no matter what is going on behind the scenes. Um, our last main character is Mr. Jones. Um, this guy is brought up repeatedly. He is the original owner of the farm and he is the reason why the animals decide to rebel. Uh, he doesn't really treat them with um, much respect. Uh, he, he will whip them, he won't feed them all the time and it's, it's basically animal cruelty but he He's a farmer during like the 1950s, 60s, 70s, so that's kind of, that was just kind of how it was back then. Uh, those are the characters that I felt were the most important, but know that there are a bunch of other characters in this book uh, in terms of animals and also in terms of human beings as well. Uh, moving on to the plot. Uh, the plot is essentially, like I said earlier, animals grouped together um, under the inspiration of one pig who sees, he, he dreams up this uh, future where uh, the farm is free and everyone's working together. And this pig kind of sees the farm um, in the sense of uh, each, everyone would work kind of to the extent of their ability. They would receive what they need. Um, and that was kind of his vision. And I'll probably get to this more in the themes, but it is a reflection of, in my opinion, uh, Karl Marx and uh, his socialist idea and often like communist idea because that is the main focus of the book or main inspiration for the book um, as it says in the introduction and uh, very quickly the animals decide to rebel which is also a part a prediction that Marx said he basically said that the workers would rebel against their owners and uh, that would inspire a socialist society and ultimately a communist society and this happens fairly quickly into the book and the, the animals find themselves on their own and they basically have to manage to work and live and prosper on this farm um, and you kind of just see what goes on because of that. It starts out as this idealistic thing, everyone's working together, getting along fantastically and then uh, corruption kind of sets in with the leadership and you just see more and more backpedaling and uh, in my opinion, this is reflective of um, parts of, of communist Russia and also parts of communist China. Um, just for the fact that, and I, when I say communist China, I mean like Maoist China and also part of the Civil War era. <laughs> so the 1930s and also 1950s and so on. And then Russia, obviously Lenin, Stalin, 
and a little bit past that. But uh, when you read the plot, know that there is a lot of behind the scenes inspiration that Orwell gives to this book and to the characters. It says on the back that it is uh, supposed to be a reflection of communist Russia, but I also see reflections of communist China. Moving on to themes. Um, number one theme, corruption. Uh, this is very much a big part of the book in terms of the leadership becoming corrupt and going against the original values and changing things for their own benefit and things like that. It's, this is mainly seen at the very end of the book, like the last few chapters. It, you see the way that happens early on. Another big theme is loyalty and this is easily a big thing because for this socialist society to work, you need everyone to kind of be able to work together and cooperate and do what needs to be done. And right away we see this, but well, the only person that remains loyal is Boxer and everyone else kind of becomes submissive to the, the rule. And so uh, yeah, those are the two themes that I found uh, interesting to the, and important. Yeah. Moving on to enjoyment in terms of, well, enjoyment. I read this book in two days. Uh, and I could have easily finished it in one, but I didn't because I had other stuff to do. Uh, I did enjoy it more than 1984. I liked the fact that it had um, a lot of uh, historical reflections in it. Like I have said, uh, it reflected events that went on in China. It, went, it reflected things that went on in Russia. Um, and myself knowing things, like I just took a Chinese history class and focused on the 20th century in China. And so I saw a lot of that stuff come out in this book. Uh, and then myself also knowing a, a decent amount about um, Soviet Russia. I also saw stuff like that. And um, it's just a very interesting thing to see. And that was my main reason for liking it. It's, it's a fairly easily written story. I think my brother read it when he was like 8 or 10 or something like that. And he liked it. I'm reading it now. First time reading it. Um, I enjoyed it. Definitely better than 1984. And so, yeah, pick it up if you like uh, political books, I guess. Except it's not really political unless you, like, know different ideologies and ways of possible ways that societies could work. Um, if you have that background, you will enjoy it because you see a lot of these things. But if you don't know it, you might not get as much out of it. But it's, all, it's, it's still a really good read. And that's my review. Like, favorite, comment, and subscribe if you so choose. I would appreciate it immensely. Um, and yeah, that's about it. My name is Nick Pell. And as always, my good people, keep on reading. Welcome to Paradise